Welcome to Open Your Reality. I made a video about two and a half months ago called Definitive Proof We Are Living Inside a Computer Simulation. In the video, I gave 10 proofs that help demonstrate why the probability is almost certain that our world is a computer simulation. That video went on to receive over 30,000 views and has since put my channel on the map. But I'm afraid the video really didn't explain simulation theory well. So that's why I made this video. I want to give you the basic principles of the simulation argument and answer some of the questions you guys had. And hopefully, it'll only take about five minutes to do. Along with the views on the video came a ton of comments. I tried to read and respond to all of them, or at least read all of them. but. I do get back to most of the commenters who leave sensible messages. There were some very strong reactions and the receptions to the video was mixed. So I want to dispel some of the misconceptions about simulation theory. So we're all on the same page. Before I go on, please subscribe if you find my content entertaining and interesting. I appreciate that. Okay. So let me break down the theory so you understand exactly what it is. Okay, here it goes. Our entire physical universe and our world, including our bodies, are all virtual. They are not real. They are simply a simulation. Existentially speaking, there are no atoms, molecules, cells, brains, organs, or anything. Everything we see is just data in a computer program. Your body is virtual. Space is virtual. And so is your house and so is your car. Shocking, I know. For those who are new to simulation theory, this could blow your mind. So strap in your seatbelt and hold on because Kansas is going bye-bye. Yeah, I love The Matrix too, but that movie is not an accurate representation of the simulation argument. So please don't try to compare it. Anyway, getting back to the theory. The only thing that is fundamental in simulation theory is consciousness. All else is virtual. Now, I'm using words to describe a very complicated subject, so I understand if you have questions. If you don't understand or if you don't have the same picture of it as I do, just leave your questions in the comments section and I'll try to respond to as many people as I can. Okay, so now we have this virtual world and universe where nothing is real. The virtual world we live in is being simulated by a computer elsewhere. We don't know where that is. If the computer is virtual, or real or how long the simulation has been truly going on. We also don't know who or what is responsible for creating our world or why it was created. The best information I could get on that last point is that our world was created for us to learn, grow, evolve, lose our fear and become love. I know a hundred questions may be running through your head at this point. Believe me, I have my own questions. I'll leave them for the end where I speculate on the answers. Anyway, like I said before, our consciousness is the only thing that is fundamental and not virtual. So we as conscious beings with free will, yes, we were created and given free will, decided to incarnate into a quote unquote physical body and live a life on earth. In a way we could think of ourselves as avatars. Why? Because our fundamental essence is consciousness and not our bodies. Yet we identify ourselves with our bodies because that's all we know. But you existed as consciousness before the person you are now, and you will continue to exist after the death of your physical body. Just not exactly in the way you think, but that's for another video. I want you to know there have been countless examples throughout history of people leaving their body, such as in near-death experiences and paranormal experiences. This proves that consciousness can leave the body and does not need one to exist. This assertion is in stark contrast to what all materialists believe, and I understand how it sounds, but I absolutely believe it 
and I know some of you do as well. If you don't, and you think simulation theory is just a load of crap, that's fine. I'm not here to convince you. I'm here to explain what it is. Okay, so let's summarize the theory. Our entire virtual universe is a simulation. It's being simulated by a computer elsewhere, meaning outside of the simulation. Remember, the computer and the simulation cannot exist in the same reality frame. It's just like a Sims game. The virtual characters in the game can never touch or feel the computer or even the code that created them. They can't climb outside the game. It's the same for us. Now, our consciousness decides to enter the virtual reality or simulation, I kind of use them interchangeably sometimes, and takes on a body. It then becomes fully immersed in the game and completely forgets about itself outside of it. This allows itself to be totally integrated into the game. By doing so, all the choices it makes truly matter as it believes this is the only life it has. By being fully immersed in the game, the consciousness inhabiting the body gets to make choices and deal with real world consequences. By doing so, it learns and either evolves and levels up or de-evolves and levels down. The point of the game is to evolve, of course. And to do that, we need to make good choices from the being level. When our body or character dies, our consciousness still exists and returns to the reality frame it was in before we were born. Some people call this the afterlife, but it's just another virtual reality frame. You see, there are thousands of simulations within the computer. One of the world's leading experts on simulation theory, Tom Campbell, calls this computer the LCS, or Larger Consciousness System. Again, we don't know who made it, and we can't go outside it. I know some of you might be disturbed by that, but you shouldn't be. The virtual worlds or simulations created by this computer, or the LCS, were designed for one primary purpose. That is to allow us to express our free will, make decisions, learn, and evolve. What is the end game of it all? I don't know. Perhaps it's to evolve to a point where our consciousness eventually melts away and we no longer need to play the game. Similar to a raindrop splashing into the ocean. It loses its individual nature, but becomes the entire ocean. So there you go. That's my take on the simulation argument. Now, let me answer some common questions that I've seen. Number one, why is there suffering in the simulation? I mean, the creator must be some type of sadist to have created a world like ours. That's a very good question, and I've seen it in the comments section. The creator didn't create the conditions we have on Earth now. The level of our quality of conscious, excuse me, of consciousness is the cause of most of the suffering on Earth. It's we who have decided to form gangs, go to war with each other, rob, lie, steal, maim, etc. It's our free will. Some of the other reality systems are not like ours. It's a much more civil world and a lot more caring with less violence. That's because the quality of consciousness in the players of those games is more highly evolved than ours. Ours is more akin to a virtual reality kindergarten. Number two, can we manipulate the simulation to our own liking? Are there cheat codes? The answer is yes and no. By using our conscious intent, we can sway the odds in our favor that something will happen that we want. Sometimes it will work, and other times it just won't. Why can't we do it all the time, you may ask? Because this is a multiplayer game, and there are other players using their intent to get the same thing you want. On some occasions, only one person can get it. Some people become powerful and can manipulate reality more than others. However, those people most likely won't elect to use their power for selfish reasons. It's interesting, the more power you get, the less you want to use it, as the more evolved spiritually you likely become. It's kind of a catch-22 in that way. 
What happens if we commit suicide is another common question I see. If we do, we'll find ourselves back in the reality frame we came before we were born. You'll be able to review your life, see the bad decisions you made, and then you can choose to return to the game and try again. That's really the case for anyone who dies here. But suicides are a bit different in that if you do it once, it becomes easier to do in the next lifetime. I'm personally against the idea of suicide unless the suffering is so great you no longer want to play the game. But that would be in very rare instances. Okay, another question. Do you go to hell if you really do bad things in this life, like commit crimes or even murder people? The answer may surprise you. It's no. You go back to the same reality frame and go through the same process as everyone. There is no punishment for being bad or reward for being good in the other reality frame. The punishment is really a crappy life here on earth if you do something bad and knowing you de-evolved. The reward for doing good on earth is living a happy positive life here and knowing that you are evolving spiritually. But there is no hell, no devil, and no heaven where you eternally linger in the afterlife. You just keep on coming back to virtual realities and it's living lives over and over. It's also your choice to get back into the game, so to speak. But nearly everyone does at some point. How do we know we are living in a simulation? This is the last question I'll answer. Well, check out my other video for evidence. I'll put the link in the description below. But in general, we can tell because our universe is digital and not analog. And a digital universe is really a virtual universe. We have a, a smallest discrete measurement of time and size here, which is the Planck length and also for time. And the speed of light is constant. And there's also a speed limit to how fast things can travel. The quantum slit experiment is also evidence. And so is the fact that consciousness can exist perfectly outside the body. Some of the smartest people on Earth, like Elon Musk, Nick Bostrom, and Anthony Peake, believe we live in a simulation. It's time we start seriously considering the theory. I could go on talking about simulation theory and answering questions about it for hours, but I'll stop here. If you have a question, leave it in the comments below and give me a big thumbs up if you can. This tells me and YouTube that you like my content and want me to produce more. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.